What's up everybody? Here is your St. Lawrence River recap. Um, <laughs> you ask, you know, how does somebody catch 21 and a half pounds of smallmouth in the top 10 uh, the first day and then it completely wet the bed the second? Uh, um, top 10 the first day, second day, weighed in two fish and I'm about to tell you exactly how I caught them and how I did not catch them. Um, you know, start from the beginning guys, this was not a great practice. Um, um, I hate, you know, what we had, you know, for this Elite Series tournament, you know, we're dealing with a lot of changes. Um, we had to be tested when we got here for all the COVID stuff. Everybody cleared. Uh, thank the good Lord for that. Um, and we could not fish Canada. So that's one reason why we moved down here to Clayton. Where we're, no we're normally in Waddington, which is more mid-river, and we wouldn't be able to fish Lake Ontario. So they moved us down here so we could fish Lake Ontario as well. So practice was, you know, it, it was very inconsistent. You know, I did catch some big ones, as y'all saw in practice, um, but um, I never did, uh, I never felt comfortable with anything. You know, my best day of practice was where I ended up in the tournament. Um, I only got like seven or eight bites in practice, um, but um, they were the right size. So I, I, I actually, I started on a spot that I'd caught like a four and a half in practice, and I'd made three or four drifts throughout, you know, that particular day on this particular shoal that I ended up being on. Um, I marked some other fish, but I just couldn't get them to eat. So, in the, so anyway, I really didn't know where I was going to get bit or where my big ones were going to come from. So that's where I ended up starting. Um, so, and gosh, they were gang piled on this thing. It was cloudy, windy that morning. Those fish really ate. Um, I probably caught 40 fish that first day of the tournament. You know, I had my weight by about 1030. Um, there was a big school on top of the shoal, but they were all like two to two and a half pounders. Um, and I caught a bunch of them, you know, a quick limit. Um, and then I started drifting off of the shoal and that's when I started getting the big bites. You know, I had one about five. I had a couple, you know, three in the four range and then I got like a three and a half, three and three quarter. Um, so after that I left and I started just looking for new water for the next day. Um, so weighed in 21.4, actually 21.8. Um, I had a fish that died on me, um, my big fish. I had a five something. Um, man, fizzed her a couple of times. Um, she, she just wasn't doing good. Sometimes the stress just kills them, you know, but we try to do absolutely everything we can to keep those fish alive. I fizz those fish as soon as I get them in my boat. I'm catching those fish between 30 and 40 foot. We're in current. Um, so you need, they need to be fizzed or they can die from it. Um, so, you know, great start to the first day, um, right where I wanted to be. Um, I was actually sharing the same show. I was on a different area of this particular show with uh, Chris Johnson, uh, De Palma, Perch. Uh, we were all right there. I could see them. They were a couple of hundred yards from me. But the particular area that I had, the spot on the show, uh, nobody else had found. So I had it to myself, uh, which was a good thing. Um, so... <laughs> Day two, you know, I had a lot of confidence. Now we had really different conditions. We had high bright skies the second day, almost no wind. Actually, we had a little north wind, which actually made it a little harder to fish because the current, um, it was that wind was actually fighting the current. So, uh, so day two comes along <laughs> and uh, man, I'll tell you what, the, the, the fish were not grouped by the time I got there, um, um, but I could still see them. You know, every drift I could see two or three fish and it just seemed like, Every time I'd come over the top of one, it would just hit it or it would bump it. Um, they were very finicky, a much, much tougher bite the second day. Um, so I think on my first drift, I caught a, uh, excuse me, uh, first drift, I caught a two and a half pounder. Um, and then, um, and, and then it kind of went downhill from there. Um, you know, I, I, I made a grave mistake um, in my tackle and my setup. Um, in particular, my rod. Um, you know, I, I typically, I'm not superstitious, but I like to keep the same rod, especially the one I caught them on the first day, and I re-rigged that one and another one that's just like it. It's the, uh, it's, it's the, the St. Croix Legend Extreme, and I'll show you in a minute. And I actually, I retied one that I had a spy bait on to go shallow, um, which was a medium light, um, and I ended up tying my drop shot on the medium light. Now, I just did never felt the difference during the tournament. And I didn't realize it until I got back last night. Um, it's a medium action. A moderate action is really what you want in that deep water because you have to get the hook in them. And I just simply wasn't getting the hook in them. Um, so, you know, I, like I probably got a dozen bites on that second day. It was just one of those, one of those you, just, you just have nightmares about it. Um, 
Um, and I commenced to lose and fish, you know. Um, I ended up dropping down from a half ounce drop shot weight to a three eighths because the current wasn't as strong because of the, the wind fighting against it um, and held the current up. Um, and I started getting a few bites. Um, you know, Bassmaster came and Skyped me when I was in the boat that, and I lost uh, an absolute giant um, while they were Skyping me, you know, one between five and six. And then I ended up getting three or four more bites on that main shoal um, that I would just, I would just lean into them. And within a couple of seconds, they would either just pull off then or I'd come up and I'd see them and they'd go down and I'm fighting them and they would just pull off. And I was changing hooks. I was changing everything. And I never once thought that I rigged up the wrong rod. And I can promise you guys, I will never make that mistake again. Um, like I said, when you're fishing, especially deep like that, you've got to have a stiff enough rod to get that hook in them. And I just simply wasn't getting the hook in them. And what a mistake it was. And, um, and it cost me. And I just never thought to look down at the rod. And it's completely on me, 100% my fault. Um, there's no doubt I could have kept, you know, a lot of those fish hooked up with, with the correct rod. Um, and I bounced around from there and, uh, I had two more drifts on another shoal that I had two more hooked up. Same thing. Um, pulled up to, pulled up to a shoal right by the land and with about 30 minutes to fish and I had three on back to back to back. Um, two, about three and a half. I saw both of them just pulled off. Um, third one, um, I really laid the meat into them. I mean, really hard. I, and I just, I, I was frustrated at that point. The fish come up, it was another good one. Um, and it broke my line, but my fault, I was frustrated. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, um, you know, it, it's, this one stings um, quite a bit. You know, I had the bites the second day to, to at least be fishing today. I don't know that I'd have had another 21 pounds, but I saw, the fish I saw that come off, you know, we're in, we're, you know, I could have had high teens. Um, much tougher bite, absolute terrible and grave mistake um, by doing that. And that just shows, it's just my inexperience with this. Um, I never felt the difference in the rod and it never dawned on me that I'd rigged the wrong rod up, um, you know, um, but I love the St. Lawrence River. I love it up here. Um, and this place is just incredible. It's got a lot of them. But these fish change just like they do anywhere else. You know, the conditions, they change, and you have to adapt with them. And uh, the bite was tougher, but I had chances. Um, but it's all on me. It's completely my fault. And uh, I just never realized it until really last night. Um, I thought about it and came out here and looked. And sure enough, I had put the medium light on the drop shot and not the moderate. Like I said, you need that extra backbone to get that hook in them that deep, especially in current. And I just wasn't doing it. Um, but anyway head's going to stay high. Um, this has not been a good start to the season for me. Um, um, but the good news is, is, um, is we still have, uh, six events left. So we're at no time to rest, no time to help, you know, to sulk about it. I'm already getting prepped and ready to get to Lake Champlain. That's where we go next. Absolutely love that place too. That place has got them. You can fish your strengths. You can really catch them any way you want to, if you want to. So you can catch them shallow, you can catch them deep largemouth will be a player there for sure um uh, but really looking forward to that one but uh but guys i appreciate everybody that reached out you know after day one and day two um it means a lot from you guys doing that um um <clears throat> the support you know is incredible from you guys and i do appreciate that um but to show you my setup just real quick is it's just pretty pretty simple uh, i was throwing a berkeley um um flatworm the power bait Berkeley flatworm in solid black. Um, typically a half ounce. I went down to a three eighths yesterday because we didn't have enough. Uh, we didn't have as much current, and when basically drifting shoals, you know, you get up, you, you would get up current and you drift back. And a lot of the fish that I caught, especially the first day, I could see them um, on my graph before they would actually eat it. Sometimes I could play with them and hop it and bounce it and stuff and get them to eat it. Uh, much more finicky bite the second day. The first day, if I roll it, if I reel it over one and put it and put it by him anywhere around him, um, nine times out of ten he would eat it. Um, um, but, but guys, that's it. There's your recap. Um, hopefully for the next recap in Champlain, and I can redeem myself because I can promise you, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna fight like heck to make sure that that I rebound. But looking forward to Lake Champlain. There's your recap. I appreciate everybody watching, and we will see you next time. Dream big.